Look at this. Mrs. Primrose cites three different pie crust scoring methods in her affidavit. Page 12, lines 20 through 35. She flip-flops five times between baking the pie in a tin versus a ceramic dish. Primrose must have been trying to hide something big if she can't get her facts straight. Too bad we don't know what that something is. Look, Olivia's prosecution is today. Our defense is tomorrow. We don't have enough time to prove that Primrose has a motive. But we can prove that Jimmy is innocent. How? We don't have a case. Not exactly. What's this? Your case file from last semester. And a few ideas I've been working on. Given Primrose's recipe and baking duration at the time of the theft, the pie would still have been at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Far too hot to be held by bare hands. Trudy, this is amazing. Thanks. Seriously, this is really impressive stuff here. Do I really have to wear this? Yes, it's for the trial. But why? For similitude. What does that mean? It means suck it up because you're wearing it. Do you swear to tell the mock truth, the whole mock truth, nothing but the mock truth, so I'll help you mock God? I do. Mr. Parsons, before April 16th, did you have any kind of relationship with my client, Edna Primrose? Not really, no. You didn't play stickball in the alley next to her house? Well, yeah, but she kicked me out. Kicked you out? Why was that? My buddy Gus and me broke one of her windows. On accident. Seems like a light punishment. I'm sure you found another alley. Well, Mrs. Primrose said if she ever saw us on her street again, she'd call the cops. So it's safe to say that you didn't have a friendly relationship with my client? Well... That you wanted to see her suffer. Objection! Relevancy! Sustained. Nothing further. Mr. Parsons, I need not remind you that you're under oath. What? The Bible thing. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Did you steal a cooling mulberry pie from the windowsill of Edna Primrose on April 16th? No, I did not. No further questions. And did Mr. Parsons ever visit your store, Miss Green? Yes, all the time, until I found out he was stealing from me. Stealing what? Mostly from the candy aisles. Oh, Charlie's, Goody Gums, Cocoa Nutters, Mooncakes. So, it's safe to say that Jimmy's insatiable sweet tooth drove him to steal? Yes. Yes, I would say that. Miss Green, did you ever catch Jimmy stealing from your store? No. Then, how do you know he stole from you? He admitted it apologized and paid for all of the candy that he took. He came forward and paid for all the candy. A changed man. Name and occupation? Gil Miller, paper boy for the Gazette Mirror. And it's my understanding that you're classmates with Jimmy Parsons? Sure shooting. Prior to April 16th, did Jimmy ever mention Mrs. Primrose to you? Oh yeah, all the time. He was pretty steamed that she kicked him out of her alley after he broke her window. Did he make any inflammatory comments? Well. Whenever Jimmy got real mad, he'd say, I'll get that, Mrs. Primrose, even if it's the last thing I do. Sounds like my client's a bit of a braggart, right? Yeah, he did like to brag a lot. So I'm sure after he stole Mrs. Primrose's pie, he talked up quite a storm. Jimmy wasn't proud that he stole the pie from the woman that kicked him out of his stickball alley? I don't think he ever mentioned stealing a pie. He never mentioned stealing it by. What time do you usually make your deliveries on Street Lane Avenue? 2.30 on the dot every day. And did you see anyone on Street Lane Avenue on April 16th? Sure. I saw Jimmy on his bicycle. And where exactly was Mr. Parsons? I just signed off a package to Mr. Huxley, and when I turned around to leave, I saw Jimmy riding away from Mrs. Primrose's house. Sounds a lot like fleeing from the scene of the crime. You said you make your deliveries every day to Street Lane Avenue at 2.30. Come rain, come shine, come snow, come... And what do you see usually at 2.30? Usually just the kids coming home from school. Like my client? Well, yes. So he could have just been riding his bike home then? <sighs> sure, he could have. 
Mr. Smitty, when you saw Jimmy, did you notice anything strange about his appearance? Exhibit F, Mr. Parsons' corduroy trousers. Please notice the stain seven inches in diameter below the left pocket. And what kind of stain might that be? My colleagues at the Pi Forensics Research Laboratory have confirmed the stain to be mulberry, a 100% match. Mulberry, the same type of berry as Mrs. Primrose's pie. And would said stain only come from a pie? I suppose not. My client has stated on the record that during his bike ride home, he took his usual shortcut through Pullman's Creek, known for its moist, clay-based topsoil and moderate pH levels. Given the creek's light semi-shade, would you consider it an optimal growth setting for the North American mulberry bush? Yes, I would. So, the stain could have just as likely come from a plant as a pie? That is correct. Hmm. Dude, that was tits. I think we got this. Call to the stand, Mrs. Edna Primrose. What the hell is this? Thank you so much for being here today, Mrs. Primrose. Although I wish it was under better circumstances. Oh, it's no trouble, really. I don't have much time left on this earth, so I just hope this is all over soon. Could you please describe for me what happened on April 16th? I woke up, read the paper, went to the grocery store, and came home to bake a fresh, scrumptious mulberry pie. I set it on the windowsill to cool, then went into the living room to do my crochet. But as soon as I started, I saw a young whippersnapper run up to the window, snatch the pie, and run away. Could you point out said whippersnapper? That's him. Seriously? Was there anything special about this pie? It was for my grandson who was returning home that day. Home? Was he out of town? He was overseas, at war, protecting this great nation of ours. Are you shitting me? Little Franklin loved my homemade mulberry pies growing up. Some of my best memories were made with just the two of us, sitting on the porch, watching the sunset, and listening to the cicadas eating pie. Then the draft came, and more than anything, Franklin wanted to do his part for the country. I was so worried for him that I'd spend night after night wide awake with tears running down my cheeks, hoping that he was okay. He telegrammed me that he was on leave and would be stopping in town for just a few hours. My heart almost burst open with joy, and I knew exactly how to make him happy. With a warm, sweet mulberry pie made with the same love from his childhood. All I wanted was one more sunset, just like we used to have. But that was taken from me. Objection! What does this have to do with anything? It's incredibly touching, that's what. That will be all, Your Honor. Recess until tomorrow, though I think this jury has heard all it needs to hear.